Hi guys, how we doing? Welcome to another episode of Barcelona and today it's the mid-season review. We're going to take you through how the season's gone so far and um, there's a few things in terms of, you know, how the, the, the league's going, other competitions, how players are developing and how we are in terms of looking at our long-term goals and our short-term goals. And... Um, for the more eagle-eyed among you, you will see that um, on this left-hand side of the screen here, um, things are looking pretty good on the whole Premier League front. Um, can not complain at all. But uh, before that, we'll go into the uh, the games um, and just kind of talk you through where we are compared to last time out. So um, I believe I left you last time at the uh, PSV game where we won 2-1 in the Champions League. Um, and since then, we've just had Premier League games and been unbeaten in all of them. We um, They were all really quite comfortable games. Uh, except for the two games against Swansea, I don't know what it is about this team. I'm glad I won't have to play them again, at least in the league. Um, we really should have beaten them in this 0-0 draw, and for some reason, just nothing went in the back of the net. Uh, I think we hit the woodwork a few times as well, and I um, just could not get the result. Um, Sanchez picked up a knock as well, which was a bit unfortunate, but um, nothing too crazy is all right. Um... But yeah, the, the other games were all really quite comfortable. This game against Stoke, I was expecting to be a hard one because, you know, it's Stoke. But um, they they just got absolutely rolled over. Once we uh, got the first goal, it was just all us. And um start of the second half, we just absolutely battered them. And uh, there was no way back for them. And um, just as a measure of just how um, easy it was, even Destro scored. So uh, that if that's not a measure of um, a weak side then uh, I don't know what is um, we managed to um, we oh I might as well talk about the Watford game actually we played them as well Destro got another goal um, obviously getting these goals is starting to build his confidence up uh, obviously the Premier League's a hard league to adjust to so I'm not being too hard on the kid um, but I am being quite ruthless in terms of team selection you know I'm not just leaving him in the squad saying he'll score eventually he'll score eventually you know He's coming off the bench and he's going to take his chances there. And he will get it. He will get it. But um, right now he's, he's taking his time. But he is starting to get the goals back. Um, again, another relatively easy game here. Uh, it took us until the second half, actually, to really get a goal. I thought it was going to be another tough game off the back of that Swansea one where we just couldn't find the back of the net. But, um, yeah, once we actually got that goal, it was uh, the penalty. Yeah, the penalty was the first goal. Um... Yeah, once that went in, it, the floodgates absolutely opened, which is uh, the idea, really. The way I set up tactically is that we control the game. Um, if teams want to sit back, they can sit back, but we don't really give them too many opportunities to score against us. And then once we do score, they've got to come out and attack, and then we can actually play our football and uh, break them down. And uh, it really is starting to work. As you can see, Like from the start of the season, it was a lot, we were winning games by one goal all the time, apart from I think this was probably the only game we won by more than one for a long time. And then um, slowly we started scoring a few more goals, but we started conceding them as well. And then this was like 2-0. And then over time we started to edge away winning by two and three goals. So the tactics are starting to work a bit more. Um, I'll go into that in a bit more detail after this. But um, yeah, after that we played Swansea again. And it was another tough game. And um, if it wasn't for Santi Cazorla um, scoring another penalty then um, it probably would have been another 0-0 draw. But in the end, we managed to get the result at their place. Um, and it's put us in a really, really good position in terms of the Premier League, which we will look at now. Um, so, yeah, here's the table. And I, I don't really know what else to say. We are we're top by, by some distance. And we've got a game in hand on our nearest uh, competitors as well. So, I mean, if Man United win their game and we win ours will still be 10 points clear at the top of the table at the point of New Year. Like, that's crazy. Um, I mean, I've been... The board gave me the opportunity to reevaluate my uh, my season expectations. I've kept it a content to qualification. I'd just like to keep the expectations as low as possible because I'm not going to spend a whole load of money, so I don't really need the extra transfer um, budget. I like to just keep the expectations low, do my job with limited funds I guess 
Um, if that's even a thing at Arsenal these days. But um, yeah, so I mean, there's no pressure on me. But in my in the back of my mind, in between me and you, we have to win the league this season. Like, there's no two ways about it. Anything other than first place, and you know, this season goes down as a failure, as far as I'm concerned. I mean, they won't sack me um, if I finish second, but. I need to be finishing first, realistically. This is the best chance that we're going to have for a long while um, for this team to fail in uh, in this way, really. Um, I'm keeping an eye on Tottenham and Manchester City simply because they've got some very good players. But if they finish out of Europe, I mean, it doesn't look like they will. They'll probably finish outside the Champions League. But if they finish outside of, uh, outside of Europe... I'm going to look at maybe poaching some of their English players. Um, obviously, Raheem Sterling will probably be the one that I really go for um, in terms of... He might be the player that I splash a lot of my transfer budget on um, should that situation arise. I mean, realistically, all of those top teams um, have players that are worth poaching. So I'm definitely going to be looking at... You know, the teams that finish in 5th, 6th and 7th. And seeing if I can nab some of their young English players. Because in terms of their long-term goals, that will suit us down to a T. Right, next off we'll have a look at the squad. And um, this is this is what we've got right now. Um, it's... In fact, I'm going to even out these uh, these columns, actually. Um, auto size all columns. There we go. Get a look at everything. Um, so... Yeah, let's let's kind of go through the squad. This is essentially the the first team. Um, other than um, Urzel would normally play in place of Oxley Chamberlain, um, but for injury. And the same with Destro probably wouldn't start. Um, it would probably be Alexis Sanchez or Walker. And occasionally um, Sanchez plays in the attacking centre mid, left and right roles um, for us, and he's done a great job. He scored quite a lot of goals from there. Um, him and Cazorla both chipping in with quite a lot of goals. Um, but yeah, this is the general starting lineup. Mertesack has come to the team recently just because Laporte's um, been getting injuries and suspensions and stuff. But I mean, um, after this season, Laporte will be first choice. There's no two ways around it. Um, Chambers will come back as well. We've had an offer for Paulista. So I'm thinking of recalling Chambers from his loan if the. Um, I mean, I've renegotiated it, but if they offer what I ask, then um, he can go and I'll bring Chambers back because he's having a pretty good season. He's having not a bad season at all. I mean, he's averaging a 7.18, which is not too shabby at all. Um, when you consider Cazorla is our joint top scorer, he's on a 7.51. So, you know, there's not too much in the way of difference there. In terms of development, um, I guess it'd be kind of hard to show you. I think... Uh, I mean, we'll have a look. I mean, Bazaar is definitely the uh, the poster boy for development at this club so far. I mean, he's absolutely come on leaps and bounds. I think he started as a two star. He's gone up to two and a half already. Um, and I reckon he'll probably go up to a three star by the end of the season. But um, he's absolutely come on leaps and bounds. He's been almost omnipresent he's definitely been a first teamer since he's coming to the team i expected to play him in the early games just to give him a feel of things and then you know that he wouldn't be able to necessarily hack it straight away and i'd have to drop him and it just hasn't been the case he's been absolutely fantastic he hasn't got lost in any games he's done a perfect job for me in that midfield role he's been um he's been combative he's been creative as well i mean let's have a just a look at his stats actually here in the premier league 88% passing um, accuracy over six, 17 games, 16 starts. Only the one goal, which is fine. It's not what he's in the team for. Um, 16 completed dribbles. That's one a game. That's fine, for again, for a defensive midfielder. Average rating of 7 and 65 tackles in 16 games. That is absolutely crazy for somebody of his age as well. I mean, the kid's only 19 years old. Um, I'm a big fan of him. I think he's doing an absolutely fantastic job for us. Um, and he's coming along leaps and bounds. He's um, he's getting quicker. He's getting stronger, which you know, ideal for the Premier League. And um, he's he's developing his mentals really well as well. Um, I believe he's being tutored. I can't remember who by. Um, I don't think it's Ramsey. Let's uh, let's have a look at this actually. Tutoring. Uh, yeah, he is being tutored by Ramsey actually. My bad. Um, 
But yeah, so let's get uh, back on this. But yeah, he's getting his mentors up as well. Um, decision making is something that I'm a big fan of on this game. Um, some people um, may feel different ways about how important it is or not, but I think it's a huge, huge uh, factor in this, especially in midfielders. Um, he's getting his flare up as well. I mean, not really too, too much of a, a fussy thing for me, but um, in fact... If I remember correctly, graphs show up on here actually. So what I'm going to do, if I click on his uh, his passing, all right. So you can see there's a little steady incline there. Uh, let's just have a look at his stats. Yeah, again, a slightly bigger incline on uh, acceleration. Uh, pace is going up as well. So it's it's going up at a nice rate for me. I think it'll go up by another couple of stats by the end of the year. You know, if I can get some 15s in his physicals by the end of this year, I'll be absolutely delighted considering, it, again, he's, he's under 20 years old. Um, his tackling as well, going up as well. It did kind of, it stagnated early on, but it's it's kicking off. And um, again, I think we're really, really on our way to having a fantastic footballer at this club. Um, he's definitely the one to watch. He's been the standout performer in terms of the youngsters so far. Um, next up... Um, I guess we'll have a look at Destro. He um, he's not going to quite be the player that we hoped, but he could still be quite decent. I mean, his potential ability looked a lot higher when we were initially scouting him. Um, he stayed at a two star, hasn't really um, shown anything that he's going to go and kick on, but um, he's still got the raw stats to be a decent player. But in terms of development, it's been a pretty disappointing season for him and um i don't think he's going to be at the club long term which is a shame because i did i did spend quite a bit of money on him um but you know such is life um he hasn't been terrible once he started to get in the goals i mean his record's not awful but it's not you know um top tier either i mean he's 24 years old he's um he's getting close to the finished article you you would think and um his potential ability suggests that. I mean, he's getting little improvements in his agility, his first touch and stuff. But overall, in terms of development, very, very poor. And um, I guess I should have scouted him a bit more extensively. But I was really desperate to bring a striker in um, with the injuries that we had at the start of the season. Looking back, didn't really need to. But um, again, quite disappointing. Uh, next up is Ivor Fossum, and uh, again, a player that's looking like he's going to become quite good. Hasn't played as many games as um, Bazur, but he has come into the squad, and when he has played, he's been good. Um, again, a lot of improvement, a lot, a lot of improvement, and um, it's very, very encouraging. And again, I'm expecting in a lot of these stats to um, get up to, get in a couple of 15s, I'd... Um, I, expect, I think he's the player that uh, should have been tutored by Ramsey in reality. He's been tutored by somebody. Again, let's uh, have a look at that. Mikel Arteta, yeah. Um, again, not a bad tutor for this sort of player. I think once Arteta's done with him, I will let Ramsey tutor him as well. Because I think overall he's going to become the same sort of player. Um, and I've said that in previous episodes as well. But again, I think we're going to start getting some really, really good stats out of him. Um, a lot of mental improvement, again, for a player who is 19 years old. Him and um, Bazaar are going to become the mainstays of this midfield long term. And um, I'm really looking forward to that being the case. Um, in terms of the games he's played, he hasn't done anything kind of outstanding. Decent um, passing percentages. Um, quite good for tackles as well, considering the, the limited amount of games he's played. Um, in all competitions, 80 tackles is... Not too shabby at all, uh, considering he's played 30 games. And he's not really that much of a combative player. He's more of a, a kind of a creative one, but he is energetic. But um, yeah, he's been he's been decent as well. So I'm quite happy uh, with his development. And I'm looking forward to that continuing over the season. And, um, he'll be involved in the first team a lot more next season as certain players get older. Um, and, you know, I think he'll be kind of like the first... Um, backup player as it were depending on who the ins and outs are but um, yeah very very good player very very promising and I've been happy with his performances so far um, another player that's come on leaps uh, another player that's come on leaps and bounds is Hector Bellerin not somebody I signed so I can't take all the credit props to uh, Mr. Wenger 
But um, his performances this season have been absolutely fantastic. And um, in my opinion, without doubt, being the club's most important player, he's been absolutely fantastic in pretty much every game he's played. He's been solid, created opportunities. He's uh, picked up a few assists as well, which um, not to be sniffed at at all. And um, he's been racking up Man of the Match awards, uh, seven of them in 18 games. He's been absolutely phenomenal. Speaking of young players that we're looking to develop, we've managed to sign Christopher RJ. Um, he's a player that I'm quite a big fan of. Um, for those who were uh, around for my very, very early videos on this channel will know that I did a little series called Baggy Boys with um, West Bromwich Albion. I didn't finish it on camera. Um, but in the end, I um, I managed to get West Brom to into the Champions League in their first season, and this guy was one of the key um, players in that. In fact, for, in my opinion, he was the best player on the on the team, um, other than Berahino. Um So I'm bringing him into this Arsenal side. He's got a pretty good potential ability, um, and at the moment, he's uh, he's just below where. Um, where Bazaar is at the moment in terms of ability, but he's slightly better than Fossum. So it'll be interesting to see how he develops as well. Um, another Norwegian, another Scandinavian in the club. Um, I'm absolutely fine with that. He's um, young enough to become homegrown with us as well, which is a big, big plus. Um, but yeah, um, I'm quite happy with the signing of him. And uh, speaking of signings, that takes me on to what we're going to be doing this episode. And um, essentially we've got a game against Manchester City, which we're going to play. And um, then we're just going to whiz through the rest of the month and um, see what we can do in terms of transfer activity, with it obviously being the transfer window. Um, I'll bring you the results of the other games, but I won't be live coming them. So um, we'll get into this Manchester City game and then we'll see what comes of the rest of the month. Right then, this is the team we're going for. And um, like I say, a pretty... Um, a pretty standard team really this is the team that we would normally go for um, barring one or two players Walcott's going to start up front um, dropping Destro back down to the bench Walcott's kind of one in two starts uh, in terms of his goal record um, so I think for this game he'll be a lot more useful than uh, Destro Destro can come off the bench though um, Oxay Chamberlain and Cazorla in midfield uh, attacking midfield sorry um, Ozil and Sanchez both injured. Sanchez is only out for um, two to three weeks, so he'll be back by the end of January, so nothing too crazy. And um, Ozil, as you can see, is on an orange, but um, I don't really want to risk him, you know, give him another three days, let him come back to fitness over the, the course of the month, and hopefully see out the rest of the season with him. Midfield, Berserk, Huckle and Ramsey, that has been the first choice midfield throughout the season. Jack Walsh is on his way back from injury so it'll be interesting to see how that dynamic changes with him coming back into the team because he's someone that I'm keen to get the best out of as well with him obviously being young well not so much young anymore but still got a lot of potential English and homegrown at the club he's definitely going to be key to what we're trying to do going forward uh, backline of Monreal, Kashawani, Mertesacker and Bellerin not exactly first choice Monreal is the backup for Gibbs who is suspended and uh, Mertesacker is the backup for Laporte, who is also suspended. Um, checking goal. Uh, other than that, pretty much standard. And let's go and get ourselves some points. Right then, this is the team that they're going with. And um, it's pretty much the standard first team that you would expect from um, Manchester City. Um, Clichy may have started over Kolarov, who knows. Um... But yeah, they're playing, um, they've got a new manager, so they're playing a diamond now, which means players like Navas aren't really going to get as many opportunities uh, as they may well have done. Silver um, and Sterling obviously quite versatile, and therefore they will still be playing. But um, it'll be interesting to see how two teams that don't play with a whole load of width are going to cope. Right, then we're underway, and... Um I guess in ordinary circumstances this would be considered one of the bigger games of the season but with very little at stake in terms of points and league positioning. It's quite a weird situation, we come up against these big sides and there's not a lot of pressure on just because we've been so consistent in the league. Um, I mean obviously we want the three points 
But um, if again, it's it's so weird because if we do lose, I won't be too. I don't know. I won't. I won't be. I won't be stressed about it. Um, but Sterling does go through, and check with a, a good what looks like a double save there, and um, we are safe. But um, yeah, it's an interesting dynamic where uh, it allows me to obviously play youngsters without really worrying too much, um, and obviously allows them to develop because they're playing against bigger sides. Um, and as all in all, the team's overall performance has been really, really good, really, really solid. And um, yeah, I'm I'm really happy with the way things are going in the league, and just being able to play with your foot off the brake a little bit and with a, a lot less pressure on the players, I think that's fantastic. Because all has picked up a bit of a knock. He's got a dead leg, but I'm letting that recover, just um, as a bit of an experiment as well. Because I'm not entirely sure how recovery works on this new game. Um, I haven't really tested it so so far. I've always been quite cautious with it. You know, as soon as somebody gets a knock, I'm taking them off sort of thing. But um, he recovered up to 71%. He's going back down to 69%. Um, I think as that stands, we are now at the halfway point. He's recovered again over the half to 72, which brings him around about where everybody else is. Um, I'm going to let him play in the second half. And then, um, depending on how the game goes, but um, after a while, I will probably take him off and maybe bring on Rain Adelaide or Fossum. To, um, just to bring those fresh legs back on. But um, he seems to be okay. Uh, if he takes another knock, um, I might be forced into a substitution. But hopefully he'll be okay as long as he avoids Yaya Torre and doesn't go running into him again. Second half is now underway. And um, let's see what we can do this half. I might step things up around about the 60 mark. Bring on Rain Adelaide and uh, go attacking. Um, we shall see. I really need to sort out Czech's goal kicks because he kicks long. And uh, I need him to... Oh my goodness, what has he done? That is ridiculous from Czech. Um, he doesn't distribute particularly well unless you set him the instructions. So Sterling's gone and scored from a, mis a very rare mistake from Peter Czech. But um, a mistake nonetheless. And that puts us within seven points. Of Manchester United and even worse we now have an injury to Koscielny and one that we really couldn't afford if I'm being perfectly honest I'm gonna have to bring on Debussy in that role because um, I feel like he's really the only person that can do a job there this is gonna be really really difficult now um, this might force my hand in the transfer window as well um, I'm likely to bring Callum Chambers back in all honesty and I think this is really gonna force it but um, yeah, Koscielny with an injury, I don't know how long he's going to be out for, potential head injury, that's at least a couple of weeks. Um, I guess now's as good a time as any to bring on, I'll bring on Adelaide, why not? Uh, exciting young player and we will go attacking as well. Let's go. Wilcott whips that in, doesn't quite go where it needs to. Mertesacker though has a shot and Hart stops it at his near post. And uh, Bellerin puts a stop to Sterling. But um, we're not quite doing the business today. Uh, Bellerin's been usually solid. Um, but other than that, I don't know, we don't look like we're going to create anything. Which is quite worrying really. Uh, I mean, we've got, we've got the right players to do the job. Obviously we're a few... Um, key players short, but that, I don't know, this has still been a very odd game, only three shots on target all match. Um, I'm going to change things about again, I'm going to take off Walcott, um, and yeah, I'll play Destro, uh, it's my last substitution, let's see what we can say to him, to the Show me what you've got today. I want to see a good display. Yeah. Come on then. This game's not exactly going our way right now. Nothing's really happening. Which is really quite concerning, to be honest. They've had that goal. There's been one more highlight. But other than that, nothing. Alright, Debussy finds Monreal now. Okay, good football. Good interchange. It goes in and uh, doesn't quite get to Destro, but he's going to run after it. Good industry from the young one. Uh, Bazaar, Monreal. Back at to Bazaar. 
And uh, again, no real end product. Murtasak has been left for dead. And luckily, Czech holds on to this one. Can we get a bit of better distribution this time, Czech? No messing about. I really wish we had the uh, the defence that we normally have. I don't think we'd have been under so much pressure on the break. Um, but yeah, this uh, this isn't a great result. Uh, again, like I say, there's not much stress. We're still seven points clear. But, um, you know, I would have wanted something better than this. At least some kind of resistance. But um, nothing really to worry Manchester City. And uh, they win this game 1-0. And um, we lose our first game of 2016, which is not really ideal. Uh, but again, like I say, not really going to panic too much. Put things into perspective. Um, it, was a, it was a weakened side and we are still very, very far ahead in terms of the table. So as long as we bounce back in the, uh, in the next game and uh, continue our overall good form, then uh, we should be all right. Right, not too bad in terms of the injury to uh, Koscielny. He's only out for uh, five to six days, which um, concussion, I mean, really should be sitting out for longer than that, but um, we shall see. But um, yeah, it's not too bad. Could have been a lot worse. Let's see what Kazola's situation is. Two to three days, again, very minor. So um, yeah, not the worst situation in terms of the injuries. Would have been nice if they could have stayed on the entire game, but you know, you've got to be careful with your players, especially coming into the um, the business end of the season. Um, but yeah. Not the worst situation. Just gonna sort out this press conference. And uh, then I'm just going to whiz through the month and let you know about any transfer dealings. Right, we've signed Matias Fernandez, a player that's um, quite good. We managed to get him on a pre-contract deal. Um, we wanted to sign him earlier in the season, but the club were asking for a bit too much for um, someone who's you know 29 and would essentially be a rotation player um, in the club or, or a backup for the first team. Um, but we've got him on a uh, pre-contract. He let his contract run out, and um, yeah, it'll be it'll be good. Especially as we're looking to offload players in the summer. Some of the uh, other midfielders like Arteta and Flamini. It'll be good to have this kind of player just as backup because at the moment when um, when midfielders get injured, I don't want to put Arteta and Flamini in. To be honest, because I just got no real faith in them. They're a bit too old. I don't think they'll do the job. Um, I'd rather play one of the youngsters. So I think it would be nice to have somebody with um, a bit more pedigree, a bit more experience, um, just as a backup as well. And um, now that we've actually secured him, I'm going to see if we can pick him up on the cheap. See if we can buy him now from the club. Because um, that will be interesting. They're demanding 4.9 million. Hmm... Hopefully that doesn't just cancel it. Okay, I'm just going to have a look at the squad first and see if there's a gap that is worthy of plugging up with a £5 million transfer. Um, bearing in mind, I do want to save some money for um, when the youth regens come through because I do want to poach some from some of the other clubs and they can end up being quite pricely. Um, but let's let's have a, a look at this. Uh, Wush is coming back. But that's going to be in 10 days time. Urzo is coming back in 2 days. But Kazola is going to be out. Kazola's out for 2 days as well. Um, and then Sanchez is out for 2 to 3 weeks. But realistically, we'll have Urzo, Wilshire, Kazola all coming back pretty soon. I don't think we necessarily need to buy him now, but the option is still there. Um, we might take them up on that over the course of the transfer window, but for now, um, we can wait until the summer for him to come in as a free backup player. Um, it's also worth noting while he's on the screen, we've, um, we called Callum Chambers just because PSG are going to pay us in the region of nine and a half million straight out for, um, Gabriel Paulista, a player that I don't intend on really using is uh is like the backup backup defender. Um so I mean he's played a few games, he's done alright. He hasn't been terrible, but um I think Callum Chambers is a, about as good as him. 
it's got a lot more potential going forward and um, definitely someone that I'm keen to use. So, um, yeah, I mean, bring in 10 million um, or there or thereabouts and bring Chambers back on loan. He's played 11 games for Everton. Not a huge amount, not terrible either. He's done quite well there, so I'm happy to bring him back into the squad and uh, see how he does coming back into this Arsenal team. Oh, we've just had another bid for Gabriel Paulista um, from Bayern Munich. And they've offered 10 million, so I'm going to accept their offer as well. Um, yeah, the offer is too good to turn down for a player that we're not using. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to take that. And see which one he takes. I mean, either way, I'm not too fussed. Um, I mean, we are going to play a Bayern in the Champions League. But Gabriel Paulista doesn't exactly worry me in terms of um, ability to stop our attackers playing realistically. So I'm not too fussed if he goes there. I don't think he'll start either. I think he'll be a backup. So um, not too much of a big deal there. Um, but yeah, so hopefully... Bayern's one comes through, it's a bit of extra money, but um, either way, he's going to be off and clearing up space for Callum Chambers to start developing himself again here at Arsenal. Right then, we, um, we've sold Olivier Giroud to Juventus, this is a transfer that we agreed quite a while um, ago, and uh, we've got 18.25 million for him, which um, is not a whole load, but it's not terrible either, brings money back into the club. And um, I'm quite happy with that. He wasn't really playing for us. He um, wasn't going to play long term. Um, so yeah, we sold Giroud. And um, you know, it frees up some space on the wage um, bill as well. Which gives us a bit of wiggle room. Especially when it comes to negotiating contracts for high ability youngsters. Um, which is definitely going to be one of the key... Um, one of the keys to success for this series, so um, I'm quite happy with the way that that's gone. Right then, a bit more transfer news, and um, Gabriel Paulista has gone to Bayern Munich, which is absolutely fantastic for me. That's 10 million in, and um, I'm really, really happy with that. So um, I'm going to have a word with him and say, um, best of luck for the future. And uh, <laughs> I told him, oh, the club needs money. We don't. But um, we're just happy to see that money coming in. And uh, I'll accept that. Now, AC Milan have made a bid for Mr. Per Mertesacker. Now, we are bringing back Callum Chambers, but I feel like we would maybe need another first team defender if this was to happen. So, um,. We're going to get 9 million in for him with a potential 2.3 million if he plays another 50 games for the club, which is, I guess, quite likely in Italy for a 31 year old defender. They can play quite a long while in uh, Italy. So we'd see that money, I'd imagine. We'd definitely see the 9. We might get to see the whole 11.25. Um, I don't think that's money that we can really turn down for someone like Mertesacker to get that sort of money in because he's not. He's not fantastic, as we saw against Manchester City. I mean, uh, anyone with a bit of pace is going to expose him now. Back in the day, he might have fared a little bit better. He's got the intelligence, but that pace is really an issue. And we've got people at the club that could do a better job than him. So, I'm not going to respond just yet i'm going to have a look in the transfer market see who's available see if we can get anybody british or at least homegrown uh to replace him and see what that situation will be and then i'll make a decision on whether to make this transfer right then so we've just played um a cup game uh first game of the fa cup for us this season uh, as you can see from the uh, players that played i Bought in a lot of the youngsters, rested a load of the first teamers, um, and obviously I bought in Urzel as well just to let him get some fitness back coming back from injury. Uh, just brought him on as a sub, but um, it was a pretty solid 2 0 victory. Both of the goals come in relatively early in the first half. Um, Oxley Chamberlain got two assists, um, goals from Destro and Coquelin, and overall, um, a very, very good game from us. 
And um, it was interesting to see a lot of the youngsters in action. Donnarumma being uh, probably our most promising young goalkeeper. Um, he was very, very solid at the back, dealing with shots quite well. Um, as as for everything else, it was pretty much nondescript. Um, but yeah, it was it was a good game from the guys and um, a solid result that sees us through to the next round. Right then. <laughs> We just had a very, very tense game against Crystal Palace. They looked like they were going to hold us to a nil-nil draw. Um, and right at the end, I mean, I brought on two subs late on in the game. I brought on Walcott and Oxlade Chamberlain. And uh, they combined fantastically on the break to uh, get us the win. Um, Oxlade Chamberlain playing the long ball out to Walcott um, from their free kick, actually. Um, and then sprinting the length of the pitch. Um, for Walcott to return the ball to him and for him to finish at the near post. And it was a, it was a very well-worked goal and it didn't look like we were going to get anything from the game, but um, I'm quite glad that we did. Right then, possibly our biggest signing of this transfer window. Um, we've managed to get Mario Goetze. Um, he was, he was um, transfer listed by Bayern Munich and offered to us so um, I, I scouted him um, I mean I knew what it was about anyway but I just got a feel for him from uh, my scouts everything came back all good we um, agreed the transfer very quickly very uh, cheaply as well um, 12.5 million some of that split up over four years which is great um, agreed his wages his wages are quite high but um, he will go on to be a very very good player for us um, and yeah, the only downside is he got injured literally today. Um, as you can see, um, just here, where are we? Where are we? There, just that news item just there. He just got injured, he's out for five weeks. But, um, I think I still he's still too good a player for me to pass up. So, um, yeah, we're bringing Mario Goethe into the club, right? Then, so we've just played Aston Villa. Uh, our place and uh, smashed them 3-0. A very, very comprehensive victory. Um, quality performance from pretty much everybody. Um, Santi Cazorla getting the assists in. Ozil playing really well as well. Sanchez was absolutely on form playing up top. And um, it was a good performance from everybody. Um, Callum Chambers stepping in for the injured. Koscielny um Looked absolutely solid. Any time the ball came near him, he was composed. And, um, yeah, just a very, very good performance all round. And yet another Man of the Match award for Hector Bellerin. Um, what a season it's been for him. Right then, um, Murta Saka is going to AC Milan. We're selling him. We're getting anywhere between 9 million and 11.25 million for him. Um, I think it's a good bit of business. He's not getting any better. Certainly not getting any younger. And um, he'll have a good career at AC Milan. I think he'll see out the rest of his career quite well there. He'll be suited to that league. Uh, very intelligent defender. But I think with the uh, the people that we've got coming up in behind uh, him in terms of the team and the hierarchy, it's the right time to let him go. The right time to let other players step up and prove their worth in the team. And um, I'm going to take a gamble on our youngsters. Um, if the right player comes up in terms of signing somebody, um, I'll go for it. The market right now is not looking amazing in terms of young centaurs that are affordable, shall we say. Um, but I've got a pretty good selection of players here at the club. I'm quite happy to, um, to stake my hat on them. So, um, yeah, Murtasaka, thank you very much for everything you've done for Arsenal. And um, I guess now it's time to see your career out in Italy. Right then, we've managed to sign Jose Jimenez from uh, Atletico. And uh, he's not the homegrown young English defender that I wanted, but really and truly, the only one that's of the kind of calibre I was looking for um, at this kind of time is John Stones, who... Um, we didn't quite manage to get earlier on in the season. But uh, we managed to get Jimenez. And the reason I've gone out and got him is because the injury to Koscielny has shown me just how stretched we would be if uh, one more player got injured in defence. Um, 
So while I'm happy with the defenders we've got at the club, just having cover is so important and um, especially, you know, managing Arsenal. We know we're going to get injuries. Uh, it's just the way things go. So we've got to manage that and I feel like it's better to be responsible and um, get that signing in. We've still got a fair bit in the transfer kitty as well. I've been smart with the signings that I've made. I've uh, put a little bit of money up front, but the rest of it is uh, being paid over the space of about four years. So, um, yeah, it's a good signing. Um, he's, he's young. He will develop at the club. Um, he'll go on to become a very, very good defender. He's still one of the better defenders um, in Europe right now. So, um, and definitely going to be one of the best going forward. So, I'm very happy with... The, uh, with the signing and um, hopefully he will be good for the club when he does get his opportunities in the team. Right then, last game of the episode um, and it was the FA Cup fourth round tie against Preston. As you can see we drew one all and um, both goals coming at the extreme ends of the game. Preston early on got a chance, it was their only shot on target for the entire game. And um, they scored it. And um, for the rest of the game, we were all over them and just weren't putting our chances away at all. In fact, we weren't getting any shots on target until midway through the second half. Um, I made a couple of changes. Bought on Wilshire. Bought on no, sorry, not Wilshire. Bought on Walcott. Bought on Cazorla um, to replace Wilshire and Destro. And. Um, we started to see a bit more quality in the final third and just very, very late on, uh, Coquelin came up with the goods and absolutely rifled one home from the edge of the box straight into the top corner. And um, we're still in the cup. Um, it's still a very, very disappointing result. And um, we, need to, we need to do better next time out, otherwise we're going to get punished. But um, Preston have earned themselves a result um, and they've got a replay at their place, so fair play to them. But um, not a great result for us. Right then, uh, the transfer window is now closed and um, as you can see on this roundup, we, we got busy. We got busy. Um, two of the, well, three of the top um, transfers all coming in and out of Arsenal, Giroud out to Juventus, Goethe and Jimenez coming in from Bayern Munich and Atletico respectively. We were the top spenders with 31.5 million, but um, we spent it well, we spread it out well as well, so I'm um, not too concerned about that. Um, I'm just going to go into the squad and show you all of the ins and outs that happened and um, talk you through how I feel the transfer window went. Right then, so uh, we'll just talk about the ones that happened from January and um, I guess talk about the players that came in. First of all, we got Christopher Arger from Start, Goetze from Bayern Munich and Jose Jimenez from Atletico Madrid. And um, I feel that was a very, very good um, a group of players that we've brought in there. Um, Arger won definitely for the future. He's going to go on to be... Uh, Definitely um, someone that's in and around the first team. I don't think he's going to go and be a star for the club, but he'll definitely be a very, very useful player. And talking about our long-term goals, obviously trying to have a team full of homegrown players and winning trophies with that, um, you know, with a vast majority of the team being homegrown. Christopher RJ is going to be instrumental to that, being whether he's a first team or a squad player, um, he will get that homegrown status with us. And um, I've got no doubt that he will definitely be a useful player for the club. Um, next up is Goetze. Now, um, he he wasn't someone that I was out looking for. He was offered to me and he was transfer listed. So I picked him up and I mean, I've got him for 12.5 million. As you can see, he's worth 27 million just off the back of the transfer. Um, and that value is only going to go higher and higher. He's still got a lot of uh, developing that he can do. He's already one of the best players at the club and he will go on to be an absolute star. Um, so I'm really, really happy that he became available. And when he did, um, I had a look at the budget and said, you know what, there's more than enough to get him in and still do what we want to do. I'd be a fool to pass up on him. And um, I'm very, very happy with that piece of business. And uh, finally, it's Jose Jimenez. And um, again, he was bought in sort of out of necessity, but still a very, very good player nonetheless. Um, 
He was brought in because Kashani got injured. We also sold Murtasaka. Um, so it just made sense. We sold Murtasaka and Paulista within um, a few days of each other, less than a week. Um, then we got the injury to Kashani, and it just made sense to bring Jimenez in. Um, we didn't want to be too stretched. Um, so, I mean, it's two defenders out, one in. It still allows us to uh, develop players like Chambers um, and, you know, other players coming forward. You know, the younger players like Reese Oxford that we brought in will definitely still get their opportunities. Jimenez is young and he will be somebody that will be at the club for a while as well and definitely be one of the um, stronger players in the team and probably some of the, one of the exceptions to the rule in terms of homegrown players. Because uh, I'm not being entirely rigid with it. Um, I do want the a big, big core of homegrown players at the club, but um, you still gonna you can't do it a hundred percent. And um, I'm being absolutely realistic about that. But um, Jose Jimenez is still going to be somebody that will be developed by this club, um, and will hopefully come along and win plenty of trophies with us. Now, as for the uh, departures, um, again, we'll start with, we'll only discuss the ones from January. The first one was Olivier Giroud. He was, um, that was in place from about the end of November, I think, that I agreed that transfer. Um, just because he wasn't really being used at the club, he's not going to improve. Um, he's, you know, he's getting very close to being 30 years old. And to get, you know, um, close to 18 and a half million for him, with all those things in mind, um, you know, it was a good bit of business. I, I did try and push for a bit more, tried to get, you know, just upwards of 20 million. But um, they said, you know, 18.25. I said, you know, I'm not going to be greedy. I don't want to risk losing the chance of um, getting some money for him. So, um, yeah, we, we sold him on and um, he freed up some money in the transfer kitty for the likes of Goethe and Jimenez. So um, I'm quite happy with that. I think it was a great bit of business. Um, and on that same vein, we also sold Gabriel Paulista. Now, um, both Bayern and PSG had been interested in him for a while. Bayern put in an offer quite early. Um, I told them, they offered, I think, 9 million. I said, I want 10. They went away. They thought about it. PSG came in with an offer. Um, I tried to push them to 10. They said, no, only 9.25. I accepted it anyway. And Bayern came in and said, right, we'll give you 10 million. And uh, they went and closed the deal with him. And that's a fantastic bit of business again for a backup player that was never going to um, improve much beyond his current state. I was more than happy to get 10 million for him. Um, and again, um, in similar fashion, Per Mertesacker, 9 million pounds for him. That could well rise up to 11.25. Um, absolutely fantastic bit of business as far as I'm concerned. Um, a good defender, but again, not going to improve. Very old and um, just way, way too slow for the Premier League. Um, he played, the, the game that kind of sealed his fate, he played against uh, Manchester City and Raheem Sterling was just having an absolute field day. Uh, so to get 9 million for him, um, I'm absolutely happy about. Um, he's, still, he's under his value apparently, but I mean, that value is only really going to stand in leagues like Italy where the pay is generally... Um, slower the Premier League he's, he's not he's not cut out for that anymore very good player great servant to the club but he wasn't being used and to get um, you know to get essentially 20 plus million for Paulista and Mertesacker I'm really really happy with um, and the only other departures were a couple of loans um, Zellalem's going back out on loan again I did bring him back in I uh, thought you know I'll bring him in and around the first team but um, I think um, Arsene Wenger told me, you know, get him out on loan, get him some regular football and uh, bring him back in from there and, we'll, and you know, it will help him develop. And I agree, he wasn't going to get regular football, he was only going to play in the Cups at best. So um, he's out to Lorient where he will hopefully play a fair bit of football. Same situation for Rain Adelaide. He would have played more games than Zella Lem coming off the bench occasionally. But realistically, he'd have been lucky to get 10-15 games over the course of the season. At Derby, he's going to be a key player. He does drop down a tier, but um, he's going to play regular football. And that's going to be great for his development. And hopefully, he'll take that opportunity to, um, to kick on. And hopefully, help Derby with a potential promotion push. And um, yeah, it would just be good to get those guys some regular football. Bring them back in the summer. 
get them into pre-season and um, address things from there. Right then, so this is the end of the episode. Thank you for watching. Um, it's been a, a pretty um, long one, uh, considering we only actually live conned one game. But um, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed it, give us a big thumbs up and support the series. Let me know what you think about the transfer dealings. Do you think we did well? Do you think we overspent? Do you think we didn't get the right players in? Do you think that maybe we should have gone and got another striker? Um, what What do you think? What What are your thoughts? I'm interested to know. And I really do value feedback, so let me know in the comment section below what you think. Give me a prediction for the season as well. Do you think we'll go on and win the league? Or do you think that that loss against Man City is a sign of a potential bottle job? We've still got a lot of big teams to play. Um, we've got to play all of the big teams apart from Man City for the rest of the season. So do you reckon we'll be able to hold on to that seven-point lead at the top of the table? Let me know in the comments below. Um, next time we will come back and we will play the Bayern Munich game in the Champions League and um, I might play one of the, uh, I might live come one of the games, either Bournemouth or Norwich around it, I'll let you know, but um, we'll definitely be back for that Bayern Munich game, um, so stay tuned and uh, take care, thank you for watching, as always, like, comment, subscribe, all of that good stuff, this has been Shogun FC, you've been brilliant, take care and peace.